All right, it's Mike Levin. And after that last long video to make things case insensitive, I made a couple of discoveries about how I wanted to change things before I continued. So uh, it's easy enough to have a globs dot global functions once in uh, its original form with upper and lower case. However, the functions were really defined. And another time in all lowercase um, for doing these, these comparisons. Uh, also, globs.funks, which is the row one, no longer in my mind should be globs.funks because it could be parameters, param one, param two. And I have this convention here of row one funks. So we're talking about row one stuff. We gotta really just give it a powerful name in my mind. So, uh, excuse me while I drop out and commit, git commit am step one making lowercase for case insensitivity and that's case insens insensitivity like throughout and now uh, every time I find globs uh, funks that concept has to be changed to uh, globs dot row one. I'm going to jump to the top, and I am going to uh, colon percent s slash globs backslash period funks. Every time I find that, I want to replace it with globs dot, and you don't have to do the backslash here, because it's a replacement, it's no longer the regular expression, expression, it's the thing that's going to be plugged in, globs dot row one, that's as literal as it can be, yeah, gc, yep, Sure, why not? Yep, yep. Okay, four substitutions and four lines. Let's save it, test it, make sure that the output is identical. Now, uh, row one can always be lowercase. I don't need to keep two copies of it because I won't need it back in its original upper and lowercase form. The same is not true of the list of function names. So I did this thing called um, global g funks for global funks. So now that's going to be two different things. Uh, let me clarify it by going into the, the global uh, file. And we have g funks. Funks is no longer funks. That is now row one makes much more sense. Now G funks is going to be splitting into two concepts. It's going to be um, the, up, the original upper and lower case and then it's going to be the lower case version. So uh, GF orig Hey, perhaps GF lower. GF is a uh, is pretty weak. Global. It's already global. It's functions we're talking about. Funks. Funks. That's two different things, uh, but getting rid of case sensitivities, I don't want to create something that requires mental gymnastics to keep track of. Uh, global actually is pretty important because these are the ones that are being pulled out of global. Global funks. Global. Um, 
perhaps lower. That would be very descriptive. But really polluting the code. There's something right just around here. Blob funk. Blob funks. Blob funks L. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that for now. Glob funks. It's in the glob funks. The global funks, it's in the glob funks. Global dot funks. No. Global dot funks. And global funks LC. Yeah. Yeah. Globs dot funks and globs dot funks LC. Now I am recycling global dot funks. It has a completely different meaning now. Row one is, used to be uh, globs dot funks. So I got to keep that straight, but I'm going to go for the better variable names. I can remember that just in my head. Yeah, that's good. And so um, now, remember the output of this program, the only thing wrong right now is me not being able to get the right thing from my history, is the um, function name is being the wrong case. Funk2 is lowercase in all these times, and I have an extra print statement that's in there now that I don't need anymore. So uh, let's find that extra print statement. That's it. And uh, yeah, when we create the original eval statement, the function name gets in there. F name is produced right here. Hmm, very interesting. We're pulling it out of row one because we have the index. But now we need to put it back in its original form. So it would be much easier for that to be a dictionary up there so I can plug in the lowercase version and get the original upper and lowercase version. So uh, we go to where uh, we created in the first place. It's G funks. I'm still using G funks here. I got created on the fly. Let's see if there's any other G funks. Yeah, it worked because I was using it that way consistently. But now that I did that change, I need to use the lowercase one where it's necessary. Oh yeah. This has to be a non case sensitive comparison. This has to be the non case sensitive comparison. And now we're making globs.funks, and now uh, that's the lowercase version. And the original version is globs dot funks without the LC, and that equals simply, uh, oh, wait, oh, yes, it's going to be very similar. Oh, isn't that interesting? Almost.
almost the same thing. So I actually want to do the first pass first. Yank, shift four, paste, and it's simply not lowering at all. But it does the filter for the double underscore. Now, blobs.funks. This one can be a lot more simple. Blobs.funks. Now let's see if I totally screwed up the execution. It should be almost identical. It should be identical. It should be getting exactly what we saw before. Yay! Now, let's see about uh, making the function name on that output upper and lower case. So this is the, uh, this contains the, um, the original list of upper and lowercase, and they're the, in the exact same position. So I should be able to feed Caldex into one or the other. I don't think I need a dictionary. So F name, you're feeding Caldex. Oh, you're, that's why you're feeding Caldex into, into row one. So you get the function name out, which is the lowercase thing of row one. And it might not really be the real function name. Uh, if this is probably not the best way in the world to do it, but it's avoiding building that, that dictionary object right now. No, okay, let me build the dictionary. I pause. No reason to pause. I've let you see my thought process up till now. We jump to the top. This gives us our actual list of uh, functions that are at the global level. And then this takes that exact list and turns it into a lowercase version of itself. And this is right where we can make a, a dictionary where um, No, we will do a pause. Unpause. It's time to think Pythonically, and we will once again drop out into the shell here. Python choose uh, it pulls a list uh, L, uh, lower one. Must be painful to watch. Lower two, lower three. Vowels equals upper one, upper two, upper three. And now that represents a similar data shape as we have in uh, our program. So I can print keys, I can print valves, but I want to zip the two together for an object. Oh, but uh, let's see what's inside of that. Oh, look at that. Just convert it to a, a dictionary. Oh, that is it. Instead of looking inside of it, I went and converted it to a dictionary. I meant to do 
a, uh, a dir on it, but subconsciously I did a dict on it instead and got the solution. What do you know? But that's it. That's our answer. You first have to zip it, and then you have to dict it. And then we'll exit. And again. This will be another globs. Globs dot, you want to feed in the lowercase and get out the uppercase. So this is a translation library, a, a funk trans. Library, translation, lookup. Funk tab, funk tab, it's funk table, yeah, okay. Equals first a dictionary and then a zip of first the lowercase then the uppercase. Close the parentheses. Funk tab. Remember that. Save it. Go on over to our globs. Funk tab. Funks LC. Funks tab. Funks LC. Funks tab. And that's a dictionary, so that will be an open, close, curly bracket. Funks tab, Funks LC. Funks LC. Funks. Funks tab. Okay. That should do it. First step is we'll get the identical output as we have been getting before. And then the second step is we go to where that is being built. And now F name can be sticking this as a key into blobs. Funks tab, square bracket, because dictionary keys take square brackets. Getting the output, and now the original upper and lowercase version of the function names should be getting used. And they are. The only rule we have remaining, which will probably have to be a convention of the system, is that arguments and parameters must be lowercase because it's a mind boggling to think how I'm going to do the same process to convert those back to their original case form. So this is clearly where I'll cut this video. Thanks for joining me. And uh, we're really close to the point where we can fill in the prime values and eval these functions. Talk to you soon. And subscribe.